My curiosity won again. I did something I never did before. I upgraded my only iPhone to the first developer's beta of iOS 17. I was on vacation in Greece and I planned to do absolutely nothing and not work at all. And then the WWDC keynote happened and of course I watched that. And then I got very curious about the new features the iOS and iPadOS and macOS upgrades are providing. Of course, it's not a very good idea to install an iOS beta on your only device you have. Because of course, there are probably features that are not working yet. But hey, I was so curious, I had to do it. Was it a good idea? I'm not sure yet. One downside I can tell you is the battery life is just not good anymore. So it, I have like a few hours of battery and then I'm done. It's like early, early, early days of cell phones. So I always have a charger with me or a battery pack. Otherwise I will not come through the day. I'm charging like three, four times a day. Even though I'm not making any phone calls, I just like browsing or watching something on YouTube or on the internet. It's really, the battery is, killing me at the moment but hey let's look at the new features and especially the standby dock first we have to activate that feature in the general settings so i go to the settings i scroll down a little bit and then we have here a standby menu now i press that and i'm activating this then it says on the Apple website, you just need to charge it and then you can use it. So I try to charge it here with my lightning cable because I don't have a dock, but that did not work. So I had to buy a dock to try this feature out. And here it is. I bought an anchor dock on Amazon. It looks fantastic. It's really affordable, but it's it's really solid. And you can also charge your air pads, ear pads, air pads, whatever pads. So let's put this on and then we put it into standby mode. And now you can see this new dock. It looks a little bit like one of those Google or Amazon docks, but the cool thing is you can just take it with you. <laughs> and what I really like, I think I'm gonna put this on my work desk because then I have a bigger watch and I have a calendar. And this screen now is split in half here. So you can change this part of the screen. I can have stocks, I can have just a date, I can have this watch face and another watch face. I can here have the calendar of the month. I can have my to-dos. I have no to-dos, I don't use that app. Here are the birthdays. And then we have the weather outside. I'm in Berlin at the moment, it's 28 degrees. It's pretty hot outside. So then again, we have the calendar. I can also swipe horizontally and then I have to unlock. And then you can have albums from your photos app that appear as background and you can see the date and you can also see the time. If you swipe up, it switches the album. You can go to another album. And then there is a third screen. You can swipe once more and then you can have watch faces and the dates and it's a little bit less business-like. So we can also swipe up and then we have, this is more business-like. Then you have the world clocks. You have, this looks more like an Apple store for me. It's a little bit more like if you have children's room. I personally like this one or maybe this one. I'm gonna definitely have this anchor dock on my office desk and I'm gonna put my phone there so it's always charged, especially at the moment where I have the beta running. And when I'm at home, I won't need that because I'm not using my phone in my sleeping room next to my bed. The second one is the Notes app. And I really like two new features in a Notes app I wanna show you. I have here my notes for this video. And I just imported a PDF from, this is a press information from a software I use to develop. And this now is open. So I can scroll horizontally through this PDF. Until iOS 16, you only could see the first page. If you wanted to see the whole PDF, you needed to open it in a PDF reader, which was kind of annoying. Now it's so cool. You just can open it within the Notes app and scroll within the Notes app. You can even enlarge it. This is really a fantastic new feature. The second one I really like is that you can link other notes. I can, for example, link my iPad OS beta note because there's also going to be a video about the iPad OS beta. So I just press once, 
Then this menu opens. On the second page, we have add link. So I press add link. And then I just need to name the title of my note. So for example, this YouTube iPad OS, and then I just can add this. And now I have a link here. And if I press this, it jumps over to my iPad OS note. I think this is absolutely fantastic. Only one thing they could also add is like a back button, because if I wanna go back and forth between these two notes, I also need to add a link to the original note. So then I can go back and forth between those two notes. The third feature is more like a fun feature. It's stickers, which I'm not using that often, but now maybe I do. I can, for example, make a sticker out of my cat here. I have my cat, Willy. So I press here. Now Willy is selected and it says add sticker. So I say add sticker and now Willy is in my stickers. This is really cool. Now I can write a message and I can go and add stickers. This menu is also different. And then I have here my Willy and now I have Willy as my sticker. Yeah, I mean, that's just for fun. I don't really use that a lot, but maybe I will use it more. Now I can do my own stickers. I tried to send my wife a sticker. It's not possible to send from the developer's beta to iOS 16. It's not readable. Somehow my Mac, can read the stickers and it's I have not updated my Mac yet but yeah that's beta stuff probably the fourth feature I'm really interested in but I could not test it that out yet because I don't know anybody else that has installed the developers pad and I don't want to do it on the phone of my wife because that phone needs to work I'm really interested in the feature that I can leave a message on FaceTime because I use FaceTime a lot because I'm traveling a lot and it's much easier and cheaper to make FaceTime calls instead of regular phone calls. And it's so cool that I can leave a message. But I have to say, I'm not a big fan of too long messages because I think now in our days we have audio messages. So we send each other audio messages back and forth. Instead, just making a phone call, it takes double the time to record the message, listen to the message, answer the message, listen to the message. So I'm not a big fan of that workflow. I'd rather call and talk to the person in person, but it's cool that we can leave a message. So I'm looking forward to try that out. The last one I want to show you is the contact app. They updated the user interface, which I think looks pretty cool. And they also added a feature that you can, if you meet a person and the other person also has an iPhone, you can exchange addresses, which I think is really cool. There was an app, like a bump, it was called Bump or something, that you could do that. But now it's just within the system. And let me show you one thing I really like. I really like the possibility to like create my own profile. They call it contact photo and poster. On top, you see the contact photo, and here you see the post. I did that sitting at the pool in, in Greece. If I now call you, you will see this. And I think that's a cool thing that I can like, like present myself when I call someone. What I don't like is that if I meet you, we just uh, never have spoken before, we want to exchange numbers. I, You have an iPhone, I have an iPhone. We can now exchange numbers, but there is no way I can like have a business card prepped that I only send you my business email and my business number because I have several phone numbers, I have several emails. And now if I do that, you get everything. And I don't want that. I only want to give you some of my information. And it would be really cool if Apple could like make, I can choose which one I want to share once I meet somebody and which is like bringing our phones near each other. Maybe they're working on that. Again, it's the first beta. I, I'm an impatient person. When I hear something, I think it's fantastic and then I need to try it out. And if it's not working like I would do, I'm, get, I'm getting impatient. So these are my five favorite new things on iOS 17 so far. What I thought was very interesting that in the age of AI, I think 2023, we're only talking about AI and ChatGPT and Adobe Firefly and whatever. And Apple didn't mention AI once in a two hour and 10 minute show where they had uh, really, the, it was AR they mentioned a lot, of course, with the, with the new glasses, but they never mentioned AI. But this new iOS is packed with AI under the hood, which strangely they don't talk about. Maybe it's because a lot of people are afraid of AI. But for example, the new feature in the to-do app, 
is that you can make your grocery list and it automatically can categorize your groceries, for example. So this is AI under the hood. And the same, I think, with the optimization of the keyboard. It's really cool, it helps, it's faster, and it's in more intelligent, this is all AI. So AI is going on in the iPhone for years now, but they somehow don't label it that way. I don't know why they do it. I think it's because AI in our in general perception is not something good at the moment. People are afraid of it, so that's why Apple is not mentioning it. But this new uh, update is full of AI stuff. So, if you're interested in also trying it out, maybe you wait until the public beta is out. I think that's going to be more stable. This developer's beta is really, really not stable. It has flaws, at the battery draining. I cannot open PDF attachments from my emails. The WhatsApp app crashes regularly when I want to add photos. And there is also this journal app they were featuring. It's not integrated yet in the developer's beta, so it's going to be later this year. I don't think we're going to see it before the general release. But if you want to risk it that your phone is not working proper anymore, but you have access to the new features, you can go to the developer's website of Apple. You don't need to have the paid subscription anymore. You just can register your device and then, uh, for example, on the iPhone, you just go to software updates and then you can choose between different available beta versions that are out there. One thing you need to consider is that you, I think you need to have your device region set on the United States. I usually have it on Germany and you have to change it into the United States. Go into settings, you go into general settings, language and region region is here and then you change it to the United States. One more warning, if you really want to have a phone that works, wait until October and you will have all the features and you will have no problems. So let me know in the comments which of the new features you like most or you are looking forward to use. And also let me know if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'm also happy to try out other stuff I didn't uh, touch right now. Just let me know, I can do a follow-up video. If this was helpful for you, please like the video and consider subscribing to help my channel grow. And if you're also interested in iPad OS 17, check this video out. See you in the next video. Stay curious.